This is at the end of Jesus' ministry. Because of this, they were not able to believe. Because again, Isaiah said, and then he quotes from Isaiah, he has blinded their eyes, made their hearts hard, so on and so forth. This is a quotation from where? Isaiah chapter 6. What's Isaiah chapter 6? Isaiah chapter 6 is Isaiah's temple vision. And then we have these words. And oh, most people, honestly, just go flying right past this. They don't even see it. Their mind's normally on, what, what do you mean they couldn't believe? These things, Isaiah said. What did we just quote from? Isaiah chapter 6. The temple vision. What happened to the temple vision? I saw the Lord lofty and lifted up. The cherubim surrounding. What were they saying? Kadosh, kadosh, kadosh. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. It's a picture of the worship of God in heaven. And then Yahweh speaks to Isaiah, who will go for us? These things Isaiah said because he saw his glory and he spoke concerning him. Yet even some of the rulers believed in him. Who's the Aton? Who they believe in? Jesus. Jesus. Only person in the context. But because the Pharisees, they, they weren't confessing him because they didn't want to be put out. These things Isaiah said because he saw his glory. Whose glory? Well, in Isaiah chapter 6, it's glory of Yahweh. So if you ask Isaiah, Isaiah, whose glory did you see in your temple vision, Isaiah chapter 6? Saw the glory of Yahweh. We slaughter that in English as Jehovah. That's not how it could have been pronounced, but we're talking about the covenant God of Israel. John, John, whose glory did Isaiah see? Jesus. Jesus. Now, you know how there is absolutely no way around this. And I didn't know this for a number of years. I didn't know this for a number of years. If you want a little bit more on this, last year, right before the world stopped functioning normally, um, I preached a sermon at G3 from Isaiah chapter 6 and went over this. So if you want a further version. And then when I got back, uh, I did it again at Apologia. So there's a couple versions of it running around out there if you'd like to take a look at it. But you know why this is absolutely positively certain? Now, we're looking at the Greek Septuagint, the Greek translation of the Old Testament. This is what John quotes from. Uh, he's writing to Greek-speaking individuals. So this is the Bible they have. And this is why most English speakers miss John 12, 41 and what it's saying. And it's because in the Hebrew Masoretic text, Isaiah 6, 1, off top of my mind, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord, Adonai, lofty and lifted up and to translate a different way, the skirts or the trains of his robe were filling the temple. That's the Hebrew. The Greek's on the screen. It came about in that year when King Ozias died. I saw the Lord seated upon a throne, lofty and lifted up. Kai play race ha oikos teis doxes autu. Make sure you see this. And the house, the oikos, the temple, was full teis doxes autu with his glory. With his glory. So you see, the people to whom John's writing, who have the Greek Septuagint, who've been following what he said, and they looked up the reference that he gave in Isaiah 6. 
John then says, Isaiah said these things because what? He saw his glory. This is the only place in Isaiah where he sees the glory using the exact same words. So everybody that got John's gospel when he wrote it knew exactly what he was saying. John said Isaiah saw Jesus on the throne in Isaiah chapter 6. That is not even disputable. That's not even disputable. Hence, it's not overly difficult then if we will just be fair. I could have gone to John chapter 8. In fact, I, I will just, just for a second because I want to make a point. John chapter 8, verse 24. What does Jesus say? Therefore, I said to you that you will die in your sins. For unless you believe, you need to believe. For unless you believe, hati Ego, I me. You will die in your sins. This isn't just something to argue about on the internet. Jesus said to the Jews who were no farther away from him than this desk is only a few feet away from me. Unless you believe that I am you will die in your sins. Well, what does I am mean? Well, Jesus says it here, and there's no great response immediately. But by the end of the chapter, you know what happens. You go to the end of John chapter 8, and things get hotter and hotter and hotter, and Jesus keeps pushing and pushing and pushing. And finally, verse 53, you're not greater than our father Abraham who's died and the prophets who've died. Who are you making yourself out to be? Jesus answered, if I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. Is my father the one glorifying me whom you say he is our God? And you don't know him, but I know him. Oof. Jesus was not attempting to de-escalate the situation. You say that to religious leaders. You say you know God. I do and you don't. Mm -mm -mm. If I said I didn't know him, I'd be a liar like you. <laughs> but I know him and I keep his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day and he saw it and was glad. When did that happen? When did that happen? I'll tell you when it happened. It happened in Genesis 18 and 19. And they knew exactly what he was saying. Because they knew who Abraham saw in Genesis 18 and 19. He walked with Yahweh. Jesus said, Abraham rejoiced to see my day. He saw it. He was glad. Therefore, the Jews said to him, you're not yet 50 years old and you've seen Abraham? I pen autois Jesus, amen, amen, lego humin, prin Abraham genestai ego aimi, before Abraham was, I am. And the Jews picked up stones to stone him. They knew it. If you deny the deity of Christ, you're not as sharp as they were because they got it. Before Abraham was, I am. Now, it's not my purpose today to go into all the I am sayings because I go to John 13, 19, John 18, 5 through 6. It's very plain. That's what, what John's presenting. We go back in the Old Testament. We go to Isaiah's use of ego I me. We can do all of that if we need to. I just want to get to one more text. But after the resurrection, as you know, uh, Thomas, one of the 12, called Didymus, 
was not with them when Jesus came the first time. And the disciples told him, we, we've seen the Lord. He said to them, unless I see in his hands uh, the place of the nails and, and put my finger into his side, I will not believe. And then after eight days again, they're all gathered together. Thomas with them this time. And Jesus comes with the doors being locked and stands in their midst and says, peace to you. And he says to Thomas, put forth your finger. Here's my hand, Thomas. And take your hand. See, see where I've, I've been wounded in the side. Notice what he says. Kai me ginu apistos a la pistos. And do not be apistos without faith, but pistos, believing. Do not be unbelieving, but believe. Then we have these words, which again, I suggest to anyone that you ask a Unitarian, an anti-Trinitarian, whatever you want to call yourself, to explain this text. I have done so with Muslims, with Unitarians, with all sorts of folks. And they stumble all over themselves. Thomas answered. So Thomas is the one who's been addressed by Jesus. He has said, here I am. I wasn't here when you said you needed to see my hands and my feet and my side and so on and so over, or you wouldn't believe. But I know what you said. Not because somebody reported to me, because I'm God. And he says, do not be apistos, but pistos. And Thomas answered, and here's the key, folks. Thomas Ipen, he said, auto. See this here? See that little iota subscript right there? That is the dative. And that is the iota subscript indicating the singular form. He said to him. Why is that important? Because believe it or not, Believe it or not, people will look at this next phrase. Hakuriasmu kai hatheasmu. My Lord and my God. And if you want to see how this worked, you can go, for example, uh, watch the debate that I did uh, with a Muslim apologist at the University of Johannesburg in South Africa a number of years ago on campus. And he's standing there and he says, and so what Jesus does is he goes, my Lord, my God. As if Jesus was going, my God. He said to him. Now, when you have Ipen, there is no punctuation. So in English, this would be a quote. This is all said to Jesus. Auto, singular, right there. This is not disjunctive. That is not breaking anything. Hakuriasmu, kai ha theosmu, my Lord and my God. Thomas identifies Jesus as his kurios, yes, but as his theos, my Lord and my God. Now, if Jesus is what people keep telling us, you know, just a great teacher, moral teacher, whatever then what he, the next sentence should be, and Jesus rebuked Thomas and said, I am but Michael the archangel. <laughs> I am but a moral teacher, whatever. Jesus says auto to him, to Thomas, because you have seen me, have you believed? There's the verbal form of pistos. Because you've seen me, have you believed? Blessed are those who having not seen, that's not on the screen, but have believed. No rebuke. There is perfect acceptance on Jesus' part. 
of the description of Thomas, of Jesus as his Lord and his God. Now we've seen Jesus is not the Father. He is clearly differentiated from the Father. He says in his high priestly prayer in John 17, 5, Father, glorify me with the glory which I had in your presence before the world was. There is a clear recognition on the part of the New Testament, John 14, John 17, clear distinction between Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. How will Jesus come and make his abode in his believers, according to John chapter 14, but by the Spirit? The Father and the Son will make their abode with them by the Spirit. There's no confusion of the persons, but there is no question. None. John is presenting to us the fact that Jesus was the one seen by Isaiah. Jesus, the Logos, is the monogamous Theos and the monogamous Huios. He is both. And it was Jesus who said, unless you believe that I am, you will die in your sins. A lesser Jesus cannot save you. A lesser Jesus cannot save you. That's the importance of understanding. But let's go back to why is this important? We've done a lot of grammar and language and background and Greek Septuagint and all the rest of this stuff. Jesus was promised by the Father that the Father would give to him an inheritance of nations. And Jesus said, upon his resurrection and his ascension to heaven, go, because all authority has been given to me in heaven and earth. If he is who he claimed to be, if there is an empty tomb in Jerusalem, then every philosopher, every legal scholar, every military leader, Every president, every king must recognize that he will someday stand before this one who rose from the dead. And the church has been called to disciple the nation. And it is our responsibility to tell the nations, Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. And he will judge by his law. His law. See how it's important? There's a day right now. You know, we, we were so thankful to see Pastor Coates in his church on Sunday. I made the mistake of following a tweet that a friend from up there tweeted from someone who's in authority in the Alberta area. These people hate Pastor Coates. They want that church destroyed. They want it burned to the ground. They want every single person in that church in jail. The hate of the world is astonishing. That's what they want. Pastor Coates was in jail for a month. There are pastors in China that have already been in jail for years and will be for years more. Because they dared to tell the Chinese communist government, you will be judged by Jesus Christ. And if Jesus Christ was simply a moral teacher, or if Jesus Christ was anything other than the Lord of glory himself, then how can he be the one who will judge all people? How can he be the Lord of glory? How can he be what the New Testament describes him as. We have to accept all the Bible says, not just parts of it. And we have to be clear. What gives the martyrs and the testifiers down through history the power to stand firm in the midst of that persecution and yes, that imprisonment is not that they're following a great moral teacher. There have been people of other religions that did that. 
but they are following their very creator. The one that Isaiah saw sitting upon the throne. The one who was in the beginning with the Father. That's why this is very important.